audio and video experience in the United States this August 4th through the 6th. In Raleigh, North Carolina, Audio Advice Live is going bigger, bolder, and louder. Audio Advice Live is the best place to learn about the latest trends in high-performance audio, home theater, two-channel, turntables, or headphones. Meet with the industry's top experts, brands, and influencers to hear all the latest and greatest gear live and in person. Register to attend now at audioadvice.live. What's up, guys? We are back from the Audio Advice Live show. We got some special guests. We got Youth Man in the house. How you doing, Michael? What's going on, guys? Awesome to have you on the stream. Of course, we got the legendary, the real Shane Lee. And Is there a Don, thing? Don, 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 get her done, Don, done. What's up? Dude, we had a blast last week. Let me tell you guys, audio advice. Michael, you've been to both shows like I have. I loved yep. last year's show, but but I mean they took it up a notch, right? Sure I mean it just it was like taking that double cheeseburger and just adding more stuff to it, you know. <laughs> we put some bacon on it, put some guacamole on there. No, I thought it, it was a great experience. It went so fast. I yeah. mean, uh, I, I brought Shane along because, you know, my video editing skills are not up to par. So I figured I'd bring in a true pro and uh, had Shane help us out. And I brought Don for the personality <laughs> to, to keep oh, us all it. entertained. <laughs> you had your whole family there, too, man. That was super cool. I did. Yeah, it was the first time my kid, both of my kids have been to a trade show. In fact, Gabrielle is in a couple of my thumbnails and um, my wife was there, of course. And we, you know, what was great is my, my youngest daughter, she was around just doing all these little YouTube shorts and TikTok. So she, yeah, she, she was shot like 10, me, man. 10 videos for us. Yeah. She was doing great. So it was just, it was a fun event. And now, you know, what's cool about doing this live stream together is obviously we all have different perspectives because we all heard different things. You yeah. know, Michael, you and I were talking before I heard an awesome demo with Sony. Cause I was sitting in the front row. You're. <laughs> Why are you crawling in the background? That was hilarious. Oh my God, that was... He's like, what is going yeah, on? Nobody saw that. that. You can't plan that stuff. But anyways, we all had different perspectives depending on where we sat in the demo room. And that's why I wanted to hear your guys' perspectives because I had my certain favorites. I thought some some things were hit or miss, yeah. not blaming the products per se. It all, a lot of it is it's hard to get a good demo experience at a trade show. As you know, Don, you've been going to trade shows for what? Over two decades, right? Oh, yeah. At least since the 90s, for sure. So let me preface everything by saying don't ever take everything as a biblical source here when we're talking about if a speaker sounded good or it sounded bad because you're dealing with an unknown in room acoustics, an unknown with your setup. We're not the ones that set it up. Yeah. But I just want to say we had overall, it was just a great experience. You know, we just had good, good experiences meeting everybody and seeing all the gear up close. And I'd like to share the screen. I have some images. Um, unless you guys want to say anything before we do screen share, if you guys want to give a little perspective on how you felt the show went. Shane? Michael? Me? There you go, Michael. You're on. You're on. You're on. You're the guest. So as far as... <laughs> repeat the question man i was sitting there typing this I, I just want to ask your perspective on you know obviously um you've been to other trade shows and yeah. and you have your own trade show m wave so yeah. what did you think about audio advice compared to like other shows how is it different what's the focus on audio advice if someone wants to go next year why would they want to go yeah so audio advice first and foremost they they do it big but they do it super super organized very professional when you walk in the door you know it's audio vice live i mean they got banners on every wall they got them on the elevators they've got great signage to let you know what floors have what um, experience rooms and the great thing is they actually took it up a notch like you said last year they had several home theaters this year they had i think there were seven dolby atmos home theater experience rooms what they're calling them and in those are different manufacturers different brands a lot of times Several brands would partner together. Like one room would have Focal, Barco, Row One, uh, Seymour Screen Excellence. And so all these brands would kind of come together to really make a killer home theater setup for everybody to experience. And so you've got a lot of two channel and some home theater. There was even a gaming system. I'd love to talk about it a little bit as well. Just 
just done very, very well. The folks there are super nice. They, um, they care about their employees. They care about the content creators that are there and they care about, you know, the attendees that are, that are there as well. And so just overall, it's just a really, really done very, very well. Um, my opinion is, first of all, I think that um, audio advice is the class act in the industry. Um, everybody there was extremely courteous, very helpful. They, they really made you feel like you, like they wanted you to be there. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Even the vendor, I think it was infectious. Even all the vendors were in a great mood. Um, the restaurant was good. The, the show that they put on did the keynote address and Scott got up and do it. I mean, that guy's like Tony Robbins, man. I just, whatever he's selling on, the guy, you know what I mean? He yep. is. He's amazing. Um, <laughs> just, you know, and, and there was plenty of room. It was well laid out. You could find everything pretty easy. Um, you know, even the people that attended it were all in a great mood. Um, it's probably one of the best trade shows or shows of any kind I've ever been to. And, and the hotel that they have it in, the venue is amazing. And let me tell you something, Raleigh, North Carolina is my favorite new city. I mean, you could eat off the streets of that place. It's crazy. It was awesome. So I think this might be Shane's first time he's ever been out of his house. What was your perspective <laughs> on going to this show? <laughs> Well, some of you guys know that I don't like to leave my house. I think the last show that I went to was, you can find the video on my channel, the 2018 New York Audio Show. Other than that one, I can't remember the last time I've been to an audio show. Mm -hmm. And I was a little surprised knowing that Audio Vice is a retailer that they would throw on such a large show such as this one. So I was very surprised at the scale and at all the options that you have had as a consumer possibly going in the shop at that store that you can go to all of these different locations and rooms to find the perfect product for you. So I was very, very uh, surprised to see that. And everything, you know, everything in that town was super nice. Everything and coming from where I'm from, North Carolina is, was super clean, at least in this downtown area. It was super clean. Yeah. I was really happy to see how kind everybody was, especially late at night after we did some uh, karaoke. Well, Don <laughs> did some karaoke. So that was a good time. And uh, I'm sure we'll get into some of our favorite rooms. Yeah. Gene, what do you think about this show? So I, I loved it. Um, here, I just want to share this picture real quick. I think yeah. this is just, okay. Listen. Guy. listen. <laughs> When you, this is why you guys don't shoot landscape with your ultra wide angle lens on your phone. Dude, okay. don't blame the, All right, <laughs> man, that is legit right there. Okay. It, it reminds me you brought your adopted son with you. That was really nice. It, it reminds me, remember Fantasy Island with tattoo, the plane, the plane. <laughs> I'm, I'm just joking, Shane. You know that. Actually, you're you're taller than I expected because it's the first time we've actually met face to face. I mean, we've been. <clears throat> I've known you for what five or six years at least. Yeah. So, it, you know, it was great coming together, and I loved um, hanging out with Youth Man and Michael. I should say I always call you Youth Man, and oh, of course, anything with Don is going to be entertaining. You know that. I mean, that's <laughs> just gravy right there. But yeah, let's um, let me share my screen. Um, one thing that one thing that really blows me away about Audio Vice is not only are they incredibly organized, but literally any way you walked at this show. There was an audio vice staff member like ready to greet you or help you out. It was almost a little scary because they were wearing blue shirts and it was giving me flashbacks of Scientology because I'm oh, you know, come I grew on, up in dude. Clearwater. I grew come up in Clearwater. On, man. I was they like, weren't wearing don't... uniform. Dude, that was that was inappropriate. Come on. I, I go, don't check my feet and levels. Come on. It's a joke. Come on. No, <laughs> the, their their staff is just I don't even know where he finds them. It's the, like the Chick-fil-A of audio video, dude. Everybody's nice. Like <laughs> And they do it right, um, you know, and I mean that with respect, you know, it, it's it's just it was a wonderful show. I, I really bummed I missed it last year. I'll, I'll never miss another one. I'll, I'm planning out part of my vacation to go there. Yeah. So let me uh, let me see if I could share it. I don't know if this is going to work or not, but let me go back and get on one of these pictures here. <laughs> so this one, um, this one's the Paradigm Paradigm Founder 80s with to jail e112 that was jail audio yeah that's jail yeah. Audio. i love the jail audio e112 subs even though they're a bit pricey they're compact but these are probably the best sealed subwoofer in their size form factor i think i mean we reviewed them years ago we've seen a bunch of other different you both own those before gene the, the yeah 
So did you guys hear that JL Audio was bought by Garmin today? Yes, actually. It was, yeah, that's. I think that's a good move on their part because Garmin mm -hmm. is in all the boats. You know, they're in cars. Oh, yeah. why, why not now buy JL Audio, who's the leader of yeah. of, of uh, Dominate. Uh, boat Dominate. Audio? Yeah. No, but, the, you know, the, the one thing they were showing off was their measurement system. So you could do all sorts of different acoustical measurements and audio measurements if you want to measure amplifiers. I'm going to be checking it out because they were talking about a trick tool that they have to do phase alignment of subs with the main speakers. That's mm -hmm. one of the biggest challenges most people have when they're setting up a system is getting the bass to integrate with your LCR. So that I thought was cool. It's just another picture of that. We'll just kind of go through these. So this was Kaleidoscape. I know, Don, you're a huge proponent of Kaleidoscape. Uh, why don't you give a little rundown of why Kaleidoscape is so cool? Um, well, I know in the, the DIY crowd, you know, a lot of complaints about the price, and it is a pricey product. However, it is not nearly as pricey as it used to be. You can get into a Kaleidoscape system with a six terabyte hard drive for about $8,000. But what that gives you is exclusive content. It gives you movies usually earlier than they're released because they get the direct digital cut from Hollywood studios. Yeah. And it is just a absolute much higher resolution audio and video than you're going to get from HD Blu-ray. It's considerably higher. And if you noticed almost every single surround system with video there, how to collide escape as a source material, sure. it's very, very convenient. Um, the menu is second to none, the way it operates. Um, you can rent movies from it. You can rent, uh, concerts, music. Concerts. It, it, that's what really attracts me to it. Tons yeah. of concerts. Yeah. It, remember that Barco demo or was it the Barco one that had like the, the, um, the monks doing the, the little Oh thing my God. There? That was, was that not the best video yeah. source you've ever seen in your life. That was yeah. unbelievable. We'll talk about yeah. that when we talk about the folk Cal room. Oh yeah. Yeah, uh, for sure. Mm -hmm. Michael, what were there? Seven Atmos rooms? I think there were seven. Room? They said, yeah. well, what about the Sonos? <laughs> oh yeah, I didn't go to that one. I didn't have time. Yeah. I did. Yeah, it was wonderful. It's just another picture here. So this was an interesting room. The Dolly. I don't. What's the name of this model, Don? It's the Epicor. Epicor. I believe it's so. Their Epicon series of speakers is their their higher end line. Now they came out with a flagship last year. That's about 120k. Um, this this is a sixty thousand dollar pair of speakers, and it was wow. powered by the NAD M33 which is a phenomenal um, integrated Very amplifier. Nice. It has every feature in the planet. It uses the perf Purify modules like the M23 that you measured and that you love so much, Gene. Um, yeah. You know, I think the room was a little small for the speakers. Not too bad. Um, we, my brother right there in the middle, David Dunn, is uh, the big guy with the NAD. And, of course, Travis Hupp, their national sales manager. It was it was a great. I love these speakers. They're one of my favorite speakers of the show. Well, the, the interesting thing about this demo room is when we sat down to listen, and this is a large speaker, and I'm listening, and and I don't hear bass. Like it just the bass was kind of weak for a speaker of that size. I just figured it was a bad room, and then uh, uh, Dave uh, flipped the switch, and all of a sudden we got good bass. We got better imaging, better phantom center. I'm like, whatever you did, it just sounds way better. And they didn't like me saying that because that was when they turned Dirac off. Mm -hmm. So and I, I don't know, Shane. You Shane, you heard the system. Yeah. Don't you agree? It sounded way better with direct turned off. Yeah. So I've reviewed some Dolly's speakers in the past, and they've got the um the soft dome tweeter and also the uh the ribbon the tweeter as well. So we got two tweeters in there, AMP, and they have maybe one of the best you know tweeter setups in the biz. Super detailed, super crispy, just exactly what you want on your yeah. high-end, high-fidelity, you know, ultra-wide transparency for your speakers. This, I was expecting to be blown away because they look super cool. They have that same tweeter array. Mm -hmm. But while listening to it, I was just like, wow. I was like, these sound like shit. Like, these do not sound good at all. These sound nothing like the little ones that I reviewed. Come to find that they had direct turned on. Gene had him turn it off, and it was just like, the heavens opened up. I was like, wow, this is why you're spending X amount of dollars for these sure. speakers. Yep. And then he turned it back on. He's like, this is what it's supposed to sound like. Otherwise, you have sounds mm. pinging off the walls. And it gets all <laughs> I mumbled. I not understand that. I'm sorry. I, I, I was like, what are you that, talking yeah. about, dude? Yeah, so yeah. it was really weird. You know, I was at, I was talking to Matthew Pose. I was choking myself. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I was talking to Matthew Pose about that. And he's like, yeah, if you do Dirac and you don't go in and you, and you don't adjust the bass level and you don't adjust what it does... 
you can get a disastrous result like that. And I just think I just yeah. think they had a bad calibration. They probably rushed to get it done, so people were coming in. I mm -hmm. I didn't like basing my opinion on that speaker with the room correction on. So once they turned it off, this is the Dolly, like Shane said, this is the Dolly I remembered because we reviewed Dolly speakers years ago. Sure. And the, the signature of Dolly is they just have so much air about the mm -hmm. speaker. You know, they have that that extra tweeter that runs at really high frequencies. And it just sounded very spacious. I just, I didn't like it with the direct on. I thought it sounded superb when it was turned off. I understood the speaker at that point, and I understood why there were 60 grand a pair. Uh, Michael, did you well, get to hear the speakers? There was a lot of speakers I didn't get to, to see. I was doing a lot of content for Audio Vice Live. Um, yep. So once, once I got a chance, Sunday was like my day. They just kind of go through each room, and I was able to get to 14 and 15, and then ran out of time before I got to 16. Yep. So this is the Bowers and Wilkins Class A mm. room. This is the Those are eight, beautiful. Yeah, 801 signature. Mm -hmm. I forgot how much they are. Yeah, 805, yeah. How much are they, Michael? Do you remember the price? I think they're like 60K or? Yeah. No, they don't think they were that much. I think the, they were like a new 40, blue 40 grand for the eight, 800s and for 801. grand for the 804. Yeah, 805, so. Yeah. That, that you combine that with that beautiful, stunning Class A amplification mm -hmm. in pre pro. That was a, it was about 70 grand for the 70 or 80 grand for the combo. Yeah, Matthew's saying 50 grand for the speakers. Yeah, so, um, I'm a huge fan of Class A electronics. I wish, I wish Massimo and even Sound United prior to that, I wish they would promote the brand promote more. It, yeah. Because they make some of the best electronics, especially for two channel. I measured the CT twenty three hundred back in the day, which was basically one module of that monoblock, and it was one of the best measuring amps, especially line linear amps. So imagine this one having two of those modules in a monoblock, and that thing could drive a fork, and it wouldn't complain. And yeah. that I I thought the room sounded good. I was sitting only I was sitting in the front row, so I was like Perfect. four or five feet from the speakers. I didn't expect them to image because we were so close. Perfect imaging. It sounded great. Even my daughter was like my my uh, oldest daughter was like this is what she didn't like the look of the speaker, but she liked the sound of the speaker. Mm -hmm. Well, I would go as far to say if I had an unlimited budget, that'd probably be on the top of my list of amplification to buy. I just always love the way they sound aesthetically. I think they're beautiful. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're and so many people sell amps, lesser amps. People buy them by the droves. I'm not saying any brands, but you know that that's a killer. That's a killer setup. Shane, did you hear that setup? Because you shot the video with me. I'm assuming you listened, right? I didn't hear it. No, I didn't hear that. I was in the back. It is um, I've heard the smaller. Yeah. I've had the smaller ones here. What did you so, think about those when you reviewed them? I, I remember putting them up against the Martin Logan. I think 18 A's. And I thought the new these D fours are just way better than the D threes. So, oh, okay. I'm so assuming it, that these are even better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're cool looking. I mean, that's kind of like the signature look. That you either love them or hate them. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I almost bought the, uh, almost got the uh, little bookshelves, the eight hundred fives. I right. think those are really good too. I, got those. Yeah. I bet you those would pair awesome with the pair of the Perlis and D two fifteen or the D two tens, like two of yeah. the, uh, yeah, the ten inch. I don't get the uh, like. Did you think the tweeters were bright? Like I didn't, I didn't find. I don't find these. I I don't think so. I know in the past I used to not like the Kevlar driver that Bowers and Wilkins use in the older series. I I could always hear coloration in that driver. I just thought this one sounded. I think this is the best sound. <clears throat> excuse me, the best sound in their form factor that I've heard in the last couple of decades because I've listened to these speakers back in the nineties. Man, you, uh, Michael, you remember Sound Advice? We probably you oh, probably yeah. went to Sound Advice. You went. In that I worked room at Sound the, Advice and so eight hundred one Matrix. You remember those? I would go there every single weekend. Yeah, yeah. I, I owned eight hundred three Matrix. That was my first nice set of speakers. Was it was the mate Now the I'm going to say Matrix I'm gonna series say per hated listen. the sound. I don't, care. <laughs> I don't care if you say it's per listen. I say per listen. You say tomato, sometimes, I say tomato. Sometimes it's paralysis. I'm like, where did that come from? <laughs> look at that. Look at those amps, dude. To that's me, a that's just no bad to the yeah. bone. It's audio jewelry that sounds mm -hmm. and measures good. I mean, honestly, I look at that and I, I'm like Pavlo's dog when I look at those amps. They're dope. And what's mm -hmm. the wattage on those? We're like four. A lot. The whole wall. Just think of the whole wall. Just plug it into the wall and you can take all the power out of that wall. They could pretty much power any speaker 
Yeah. Oh, that. they can. Yeah, they're over a kilowatt at four ohms. Yeah, wow. they're, they're dope. And they were so like thinking about it just, just to go back. The cool, the, the, the I consider cooling. it an engineer marvel because they have this thing called the IC tunnel, and it actually pushes the air through the heat. Ex, it's like a heat exchange in there. It pushes the air from front to back with a fan you never hear. Yeah. And these things run in class A up to, I think, 20 or 30 watts, and they still don't run like a space heater. I've had amplifiers that are class A bias, heavily class A bias, and they cook, you could cook an egg on them. These things run really cool for what they are. So they just did unbelievable uh, engineering to and get silent. It. You don't hear them at all. Right, exactly. These are just videos. I don't want to show that. Saw that. So it was a beautiful setup. I think they did a good job for such a small room. There we are. That's when we shot the video. Um, geez, I don't remember his name now. Do you remember his name, Don? Mm, no, but he's a big shot. I should. Yeah. Yep. Super cool, dude. Yeah. Super cool. Look small. Yeah, no doubt. There's Gene so, Lotus. <laughs> I was not. I'm sorry to say this, and I'll 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 give Kef praise in a minute on another room. But these are Shane. Are these the LS60s, the Lotus, the green ones? Yes, they are. I did not like the sound of them. It sounded like there was no high end at all. And I don't know yeah. if it was set up or what, but it sounded very muffled. What do you What do you guys think that, that you heard it? Yeah. Every so I, heard, I demoed the smaller one or the middle, the powered monitors with their little tiny sub at my place for a while. And I thought, you know, other than just lack of output, obviously, but I thought they sounded amazing at my place. They were great speakers. But the, the towers, I don't know. They're just... Maybe it was just a room. They were just trying to do too much. I don't know. Well, my yeah, daughter every... told me they were streaming over Bluetooth. So maybe it was the Bluetooth connection that was. I don't know, man. This uh, That entire room, sound-wise, was, was maybe the weakest, I thought, except for the Sony Kef room. But that room, they just sucked out all the highs with the Kef because Kef has highs. They have really kind of bright highs. Yeah. But uh, I don't know if they're running Dirac or what, what they were running there, but. It just sucked out all the top end in every room. That I, I know I those speakers in. sound incredible. It, it, we weren't getting the full experience of what they're capable mm -hmm. of doing, I assure you. Michael, did you hear those speakers? Another one I did not. Okay. I went into the gaming room, right? So right where we're right, at, to, to the left of that, you walk a little bit further, and they had three 120-inch screens. Um, they were LS800 projectors, ultra short throw projectors firing up on these three screens. And so it's a completely immersive experience. They had, um, uh, I guess they were doing a flight sim. They were doing a racing yep. game. That was really, really cool to experience. Adam from Kef kind of put all that together because he did his personal theater. He was at my house uh, a year ago, year and a half ago, and showed me. I'm like, dude, send me pictures. Of that. He's like, I can't. We're under NDA. Yeah. And, and I thought it was just, and he, but he had them. Um, projectors up high firing out little little ports at angle yeah, yeah what, what a crazy seamless either this was like oh, kind of seamless they were right next to each other yeah that guy's awesome this is what you're yeah. talking about yeah. michael yeah 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 i played the car game and it was incidentally it was it was awesome because it had a souped up version of my car so i know how it yeah. handles but i was still crashing it everywhere yeah <laughs> i landed the plane on the interstate so that was fun just to see, oh, funny story about that. There was, as I was getting ready to leave, there was, I was filming Jeremy. He was, I was just using his phone to kind of capture some footage for him for tech enthusiasm. And a pilot, lady pilot comes in the room and she's like telling him, how oh, you got to put your flaps down, slow down, bang. You know I mean? She's like giving him all these controls. It was hilarious. So I grabbed his phone. I'm like, keep doing that. So I've got a great video of him. <laughs> Don's a Scientologist. Maybe he is. Oh, it was hilarious, man. So Nanu, Nanu. Hopefully he'll post nanu, it. Nanu. <laughs> it's okay. My phase are set for stun. Yeah, this is the room you uh, with the gaming room with the uh, projectors you were talking about. Yeah. Nice little setup. So he was saying, he Brad Home Theater Gamer did a great, great interview with him, like a full interview. Yep. I think it's about 15 minutes. I watched it today. They had a great time just kind of explaining about that entire setup. And one thing that Adam said is, you know, next year he would love to set up. They just didn't have the room in this one. It was a pretty small room. Yeah. But he said next year, if they have a little bit bigger room, he would love to do at least a 5.1 or a 5.2 setup with Kef um, to kind of give just a more immersive sound versus just an immersive, you know, visual experience. 
So the only complaint I had in that room is I wish I had a real steering wheel because, you know, driving a car with a joystick, you just sure. it takes you out of it. It would have been great with a steering wheel and a foot pedal. Yeah. He but said it, they were thinking about bringing that, but they, again, they just don't have the space and um, it's hard to get people in and out of that room when you've got that, you know, big of a setup. I was amazed they did what they did with the space they had. Yeah. I mean, they put a lot of stuff in there. And got some fans that stopped us. I, I threw a couple. He engineered that whole because you know you've got three LS eight hundred. Make it look kind of But he designed that. That was really cool. Yeah. So this is the Focal Storm room um, with uh, I think it was was it a Barco projector? Don? Barco projector. It had a yeah. Lumigen, um, and it was um, Storm Audio was yeah. powering everything, and we had a full Focal audio system. They had a Utopia Center, the one that Shane just had, yeah. and then Canton number twos all oh, the way around. Oh, yeah, it was yeah. seven dot four dot four system. It was pretty killer, man. I, that room sounded damn good. So they had uh, my experience with that room is I and I, you know, Michael, I think you had a different experience, but I, I thought the video was incredible, especially when they were doing the Buddhist part where they were blowing the art <laughs> with the sand. That, that, that was crazy, dude. There was yeah. a tear coming down my eye, and it was ready to fall until they switched the video, and then it went back up. So it yeah, was you look, you look, you looked at me and said, "That's the best video I've ever seen." Yeah, I was almost crying. Damn, yeah, yeah. Michael yeah, was, was like, "The blacks were muddy." I was like, "What are you talking?" About? The black. What? I'm telling you right now. So yeah. there was a part where where were you sitting? Well, they were using a JVC. I was one seat to the left. Hmm. Oh, okay. That, should, that shouldn't change that much. And so no, it there was a part yeah. uh -oh. that it went completely black on the screen. And I legit looked back to see if a window was open because it, you know, was, it was real weird. It was. I wonder because I was on the left side as well. That screen does hotspot. I did notice that. So okay. maybe that's what you're seeing. That was a Seymour screen, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. It was a Seymour screen. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Seymour is a great guy. Yeah. We got a super chat here for you, Michael. You hey, better man. answer it. All right, Tech Tech, appreciate the $10, or I don't know, is that pounds? 10 pounds? 10 pounds. It's uh, 30 cents, I think, Mike. There you go. That's Conversion. all good. I, I, it's I either $14 that. or 30 cents. <laughs> That's all good. <laughs> Mike, when can we expect that? Arendelle review. I have 1723 monitors for LCR, but when I uh, build a dedicated room, I might be forced to go to Ascendo, the 10. Is that a 10 inch? What is that? Oh, I'm Ascendo sorry. Why are you Ascendo? even asking Michael that when I've had both of them? At, What's that? Ascendo? Yeah, the Ascendo yeah. 10. That's apples and oranges, man. Okay. I mean, so, and he yeah. says, will, there be a, will that be a downgrade? So I haven't received the 1723 monitors yet. We did have them at M-Wave um, in our speaker comparison. Mm -hmm. I was busy helping to run the show, so I didn't, I didn't get a chance to be in that room. Um, I heard them for just a few minutes at Jonathan's house. He had them set up as well. So they sent us two of those and then one of their subwoofers. But they're going to send me some of their their products. And I'll get those in for review. So if, and if you're wanting high output theater, the Ascendo is not a, a downgrade. I mean, as long well, as you Shane, talk, Shane, you've reviewed Shane, you reviewed both. So what would you expect the differences would be? The Ascendos are definitely more. Art. I know people don't believe in home theater speakers and music mm -hmm. speakers, but the Ascendos are definitely more theater centric speaker for sure. Mm -hmm. No doubt. If you want a more authentic more theater sound, get the Ascendos. But if you're more into the music side, then the Arendals would be a. Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 So uh, just to give you a recap of my thoughts on that room, I thought um, overall it sounded great. My only complaint was Please. the center channel was ripping my head off. I don't know if they over EQ'd it. The high frequencies were like when they played the greatest showman and the, they were singing, um, it was killing my ears. I don't know what was going on with the center channel, but the bass was, even though they didn't have enough subwooferage in that room, they only had the Focal 12 inch, one in each corner. Yeah. The bass was so tight and integrated. And I had Matthew Trinklin turn direct art on versus off. And the art calibration was clearly better. And he told me he only had 30 minutes to set the room up. So he only ran it and real quickly. Yeah. And the fact that he was able to integrate the bass so well at 150 hertz and below is a testament to direct art really working. And I'm looking forward to personally setting it up in my theater, which I also run Storm in my primary theater. And they mechanically had each the subs in each corner too, which didn't hurt. Yeah, but just when he turned art off, it was a 
totally and he still had direct live on so it wasn't like direct was completely turned off but art just really tightened it up because art uses all the speakers in the room to, to cancel out and you know bass problems so it was impressive that's the first time i've heard art i don't know michael you might have heard art at m wave i have yeah we actually had it set up in three rooms mm -hmm. so we had it in the perlison room i'm wanting to say the jtr room and then we had it in the room correction room as well and we used matthew said that we had he had all three i guess there's three versions of art and they were using three different versions in the show and that was the first time they had ever done that so yeah so a oh. note on the projector if, yeah. if you get that projector you have to do a hush box or a, or a yeah, right. 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 It was like a refrigerator, yeah. man. It was, it was bad. It was really bad. Really really loud, you dude. brought that up. I forgot yeah, about it's that. Only probably, I mean, from the front row, what is it? Maybe eight to 10 feet behind us. Yeah. So it wasn't super far back and it was definitely quite well. Loud. No, yeah. So one of the things that really impressed me at the show was, and I'll show you more pictures of this. I never even heard of the brand row one. Uh, these seats were amazingly comfortable and the, the backs of them could fold down so you don't block your surround speakers. And when I first sat in them at the Sony Kef room, I assumed they were four or five grand a chair. And they were actually mm -hmm. the same price of like the Valencian. 1600 for leather, 1400 for off material. Yeah, there's that. Don, that this, is what brought, this is what brought me to tears. I mean, yeah, that, it was stunning. Yeah, that's all made with sand. That's sand. Very yeah, it's like a bunch of monks, or... and that's a big, big canvas too. Really big. Unbelievable yeah. the mental discipline to do something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I interviewed Todd. He came to M Wave and brought his seats from row one, and so there's a video on the. It's so here's the close up, Shane. I mean, I'm trying to get you all the different angles. I mean, any way you look at it, I mean, wow. you're almost, you're about the size of my daughter. Uh... <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Wow, I don't want to. I don't want to piss Shane off too much. <laughs> no so videos we have for you. The, what's that? No videos for you. Oh, straight, straight on my channel. Oh, oh, AI deep fakes my AI deep fake my face on top of your body. That'd be pretty funny, actually. <laughs> um, I didn't really cover SVS because I've they weren't showing anything. I, I went to the SVS room. It was, they I were saw, small, but they sounded yeah. great. I mean, they were loud. Yeah. I like that they use our base of Hulk ratings. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Their their new architectural sub is pretty phenomenal. Well, Pose is reviewing it one of know. these years. Yeah. Is that dual tens, I think, or dual eights? I think dual eights. The I architectural right. one. I think, I think it's the eights, Michael. It's yeah, yeah it's it's dual eights or nines, but yeah. uh it's in a sealed enclosure. So you can I mean you could listen to it and demo it without even installing it in the wall. But we got another super chat here. I'm not sure. Uh, let's see. Way out of scope of the topic, but what's a good solution for a 14 by 16 by 10 metal panel living room? I've got a 2.1 system with a 12 inch sub, and it darn near blows the doors off the house. Metal panel? What is that like a like a jail cell or something? I don't know if he's looking to for sound isolation, so I'm not really understanding the question. Solution. I'm sorry, polyester. Maybe you could elaborate because I I don't know what you're asking. Unless you guys, maybe I'm not reading metal it right. panel, like corrugated metal, or well, we'll come back to that if um, if he pops up. A... Oh wait, here it is, Lustrin House. Uh, Don, we should really. Uh, I know you don't have any pictures of this gene, but we should comment on these speakers from Elac. Yeah, I didn't hear those. Who who who? Actually oh, I did. I, I I spent some time. Yeah. Um, and I, look, so I gotta say, they were tiny towers, like Small. four grand a pair with dual yeah. five and a quarters. And the bass that came from those speakers, Oof, I, 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 I had to check the sub, even though you know, it was my boys at Elac, super cool guys. I had dinner with them and and some drinks or Tim. And um, but when I went to listen, I could not believe the sound quality and output from those. It was one of the best sounds at the show. Now, of course. Yeah. These rooms are small. A lot of these are in. So mm -hmm. a lot of times, smaller speakers or bookshelf speakers always sound better. But the bass that these things produced was was un freaking believable. Believable. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Oh, cool. Yeah, they were. They Insane. were. I couldn't even believe it. Like I did literally go check the sub. Not that I didn't believe them, but. Yeah. 
Yeah, we might have to get those yeah. in for review, Shane. He likes yeah. killing it, man. Yeah, for sure. I think they have a new but, designer. Those were designed by a guy in Germany. So yeah. well, yeah, that's where most of their stuff was. And then they did the American stuff with Andrew Jones before you left. Right. Well, this sounded better than any Elax I've ever heard, which are, they're no slouches, anyways, but they were great. Yeah. So well, this, my... the clips room, I just we just yeah, published was... a review of the 16-inch sub. It was actually reviewed very favorably by James Larson. Um, you know, it's got a lot of output, it meets our baseaholic extreme rating, a little chuffing below port tuning. Um but that was mostly done during uh, tone tests, not really during program material. Now, I'm going to say I wasn't impressed by this room. Everybody else has may have a different opinion. I thought the bass was very boomy. I, I, maybe they God. needed to EQ it. It was a tiny room. It was a 5.2 system. I thought the subs were great. I mean, listen, coming from older clip subs, which I've never liked, mm -hmm. I, I just never liked clip subs. These, yeah. I think, are exceptional. Much better. I mean, I mean, listen, that 16 inch subs like what 16, 1800 bucks yeah, on sale for 1439 shipped. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's got it's output. Killer. I mean, I liked them, dude. I, I and that you know, clips or not, I thought that room looked cool when you walked in with all the ceramic oh, yeah. drivers and all that. It was kind of cool, cool, yeah, sure. It was too much, really nice. yeah. I just they don't think it was playing, right. They're playing Raiders of the Lost Ark, and I know that movie does not have that much bass in it. Yeah, it was a that was <laughs> yeah. A, that was a piss poor demo. I mean, I, Shane, I thought the bass was probably 15 God. dB too hot. That's <laughs> how bad it was. It was like oh, fucking 30. Yeah. Man. That's the way you like it, Gene. You know, yeah. some some people have more testosterone and like more bass, right? Hey, That's Sean. True. It was funny because <laughs> after after we went to the clips room, we went straight to the JL audio room. And that was like, I wow. Agree. That's yeah, like, you. if yeah. you don't know what tight bass sounds like. You go to the clips, then you go to the JL. You'll understand what the difference in quality of bass can be. That's such it, a JL gets difference. the Kaleidoscape treatment because everybody complains how expensive Kaleidoscape is. Yeah, but JL yeah. Audio they complain how expensive they are, but I'm telling you, yeah. pound for pound, there's not a better subwoofer out there in the size and I mean, JL Audios are great. In its form factor, the E112, I, I had that in a music system for years, and that thing brought a smile to my face every time I played it. So one thing that was interesting about this room, you know, we hear about directional bass. And mm -hmm. when I first heard about directional bass, I'm thinking, you know, because for the most part, you shouldn't know where your bass is coming from. You want it to be seamless. You want it to be integrated into the room. You shouldn't be able to hear it and go, oh, okay, I know your subwoofer is over in that front right corner or your back right. So they were playing a demo. It was an older movie with um, like dinosaur. I think it's an older movie, but it was dinosaurs. And wasn't familiar with the movie, but I'm listening to it. And at one point, I only hear the bass out of the front right subwoofer because they had the two subwoofers up front. And I'm like, that's interesting, you know. Um, really? So I don't know what they're doing. Are they playing higher? Well, were they using a Denon or Marantz product to do that? Because the Denon or Marantz. The Onkyo, the 70. Uh-huh. The new one. And so it has independent controls on the, the um, sub outs, I guess. But I thought that was kind of interesting. Like I said, that was definitely different. Um, so. the, the only thing I could think was because I don't think they have the directional base stuff in the Anka. They must have been running those subwoofers to the surround channels, maybe. Maybe that's what they were doing. They were running that full range. I literally heard it out of only the front right. And I'm like, okay, so maybe there is some merit to this whole directional base thing. I just don't know how they're doing it. Yeah, um, so they're playing like higher frequencies. Yeah, um, it, had, it had to be above eighty hertz if it was yeah, that. It's it was that. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah. Well, just oh, ask yeah. the guys at Rail; they had their base towers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I think the room it comes down to the calibration was off. It was just to accentuate how yeah. powerful the subs are, but it just I didn't like it. Mm. It, it like it looks awesome. Loud, they were loud. That's for sure. No doubt. Oh, yeah. Interestingly enough, we did seven subwoofers in a blind comparison. Now, it's not a scientific experiment. Um, we had people move different spots because you don't want to move and or like stay in one location. But yep. the 1600, we actually bought for M-Wave just so that people could hear it. Mm -hmm. We did a lot of comparisons blind. And even in mine, that came up number three. The only two that beat it was the JTR RS1, which is a sealed 18. Yep. And we had them level matched. 
And then there was a GSG, I don't know, Devastator or something like that. It's a Dual 21. So mm -hmm. both of those had cleaner base, um, but... More expensive, it, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was, honestly, for what it is, I was like, dang, that's pretty cool. Oh, hold on. Was Perlison in that group as well? Perlison was not in that group. Um, oh, SVS was, though, right? Your direct competitor was, which was interesting. So I was yeah. like, hmm. So, but it was definitely, it was super clean. So... Yep, I got you. Well, it's hard to beat the RS ones, man. For hmm. yeah, they, they that definitely stuff. didn't do that. Yep. Yep. Is that what you have, uh, Mike? I have RS twos, so it's dual eighteens and a single yeah. sealed cabinet, four thousand watt continuous right. amp. Boom. We, so we covered this already. It's just a better right. picture. I should have shown that instead. Yep. Uh, beautiful setup, man. I would. So they have two tweeters. That is interesting. Is well, they operate at different well, bandwidths. They have a one and a quarter, a really big dome. Mm -hmm. And then the, the um, AMT tweeter above it, and the way they work is pretty pretty cool. That's why they, that that sound from from Dolly is just airy and out there and crystal. Yeah. And like, you know, all those <laughs> Michael, terms, right? Think of it as a super tweeter kind of. It Indeed, operates it's like uh, interdimensional, man. See, I'm not I'm not that fancy, man. I'm still on the you know this level. You guys are. Way You're up the there. horn guy. <laughs> That's my wife. Bertha. That's not a good picture. Let's get that off. That's a good one. Go back. Why are you always flexing, Gene? Every time somebody I'm has that just my natural you, state, man. I'm ready. You're, you're squeezing your so, guns hard as you can. There's a feature on those clip subs I thought was really cool. It was on the dials. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or not. They have a little light or a Glass. magnifier that you could see. Yeah. Does it go to 11? Actually, it does, I think. I think it literally does. Oh, hilarious. Seriously, I, think audio it, rocks, I saw dude. somebody doing a review, and I'm, I'm pretty sure they said it does go to 11. I was so like, great. Gene, one great. of the rooms that you missed um, that I got to go to was the one with James loudspeakers in it. Which I love James. I'm a huge – man, that room and the picture in town was phenomenal. So this – company it always impresses me i'm actually i'm using cantos right now i got the y u6 i don't mm -hmm. know why u6 i don't know how to say that but yeah. i've got the y u6 and the eight inch sub um they wanted to show me this little speaker it's the aura aura crazy <laughs> holy crap these things have a three inch driver a waveguide tweeter it's the first waveguide they have on a tweeter they're active dsp controlled they're 349 dollars a pair they have a subwoofer out, and when you plug a sub into them, it actually puts a high pass on the speaker. But they ran it without the sub initially. Don, give them your impression because you've never heard Canto before. Were you not blown away by such I've a score? I mean, they're big enough to put in a laptop bag, and it's the black ones on the outside of the two small Yeah, ones. the little ones. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> impressive. Very, <throat> very impressive. And, and what a cool group of people, too, by the way. Yeah. Super and nice. They, so actually, their biggest people. business is their stands. They they make some of the nicest speaker oh, stands yeah. you've ever seen. So here's something that people may not know That's is right. that I ran into them at Cedia, and they didn't bring a single speaker, but they have mounts. He said the majority of our business is our, our Canto mounts. Yeah. So they do TV mounts. So I thought that was pretty interesting. But, yeah, they're a good group of guys. This yeah, is an interesting comment. Reddit. Sorry. This is an interesting comment because I felt the same way when when they when those little Oreos were playing by themselves. I thought it was great. The mm -hmm. sub did add a little bit more bass, but overall, I think I preferred it without the sub on at all. Well, if you had a laptop set up on a desk or something and had those on their kind of cool little angled metal stands that they have for them, which are decoupled, they have mm -hmm. like a polymer rubbery material on them. They were great. I mean, they, listen, they are what they are. They're like 150 bucks a pair, aren't they, Gene? They're yeah. Yeah, the three forty nine a pair. Shane, are, are they confusing you with that with that other YouTuber that wears not FOMO? I'm not FOMO. Are you FOMO? <laughs> <He's> <laughs> confusing you with FOMO? But Shane, no, Shane, your gloves are black though. Yeah, what's up? With I the wear gloves? black leather gloves. Yeah. 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 I wear so the Dexter gloves. Shane. Okay. You need to pick some. New the gloves don't fit. You must have Don wears one white glove. It's bedazzled as well. Well, yeah. There's no other. So here's a better picture of the, you see the black one with the waveguide. It almost looks like a JBL speaker. I don't, you know, like, cause that's kind of like some of the JBL pro stuff, yeah. but I, I just was really impressed by that speaker. I, I don't think they're available to buy until October, but mm -hmm. we are getting a review sample in to check out. That's the sub eight. I actually have that under my desk right now. 
Yeah. Cool company. I don't Again know. with the dollies. We got a lot of dollies here. A lot of photos of dollies. I'm sorry, I didn't go. I should I probably should have sifted through this better. Oh, uh, boy, the Cambridge. Dude, the Cambridge Bro, was the best, best room. <laughs> It was yeah, the best room. Uh, that room kicked ass because they yeah, were serving us right. whiskey. <laughs> yeah, they they're like, "You want some bourbon?" I'm like, "What?" Don never left. Don I disappeared for an hour. Over. I'm like, "Where's Don?" I'm still <laughs> at Cambridge, dude. Flag. I'm still at Cambridge. They had the Kef, I was there for a while. Uh, met, the Kef Metas, the fifties, I think. The the you know yep. the bookshelves with a couple of little Kef subs, and their um, one of their, their new integrated uh, two channel integrated amp. I think it's about three grand. And they had all kinds of cool posters and, you know, just a whole hotel with the windows open, looking at the brick building behind it. And they had it set up like a British flat and they were, they didn't even stream. They were playing CDs and records yeah. and, and they were just cool, man. That they were the cool cats, man. There was a dude in there. He looked like he was the, the bouncer for the whole hotel working for Cambridge, man. He was like, I, I forgot his name. I forgot. I call know, him Stallone. Good. He was awesome. Yeah. Awesome he was a dude. Good. They were all cool, man. They were, they were, Absolutely, yeah, that's it right there. It sounded great too. It did sound the really good. going on. They had a bunch of cool swag. Yeah, it was it was really great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll definitely. Oh, this is the I'm so, this is the JL audio measurement system. Yeah. It's like three grand or thirty five hundred bucks, and it comes <laughs> yeah. with one, two, three, four, five, five or six microphones. So it does a microphone array, and it does it does audio analog measurements. So if you want to measure amplifiers or acoustical measurements, so I'm definitely going to be checking this out and see if it's viable to measure amplifiers with. They actually used this system to tune my car. When I went to Miramar in, um, in uh, Florida, I drove out to the JL plant and I got um, a whole system put into my BMW M240. And there were, this was in development at the time. This is like six, seven years ago. So I'm glad to see it's finally a product that you can get. And this is their, this is the paradigm. Yeah. The fit, the ADFs. I didn't think the paradigm sounded as good as I normally heard them, but those jail subs, man, they were so tight and deep. They were really right. Shane. I mean, that you, I think you were blown away yeah. by that little sub. Yeah. I really dug those subs, especially coming from the clips room. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, well, you're talking about you could buy four of those clipses, you know. No, no, the E112 is like 2100 bucks. 2600 dollars, dude. So two of the clutches or almost two. Oh, sorry. Kaleidoscape again. Actually. So what Don, what did you hear that we didn't hear? Because Shane and I were try trying so hard to shoot video that we missed a lot of right, well. I tell you a speaker that it's really hard to pick your favorite of the show. You know what I mean? What you're going to see a trend of is what we're talking about is a lot of the hotel rooms that had bookshelves tended to sound better because I think they fit the room. Yes. Better, right. So Cabas, um, it's a French company. They're, they're kind of known for making these like alien sci-fi eyeball looking things years ago that were 150 grand a pair and had these kind of swirly stands, but they had a pair of small, like really small powered monitors that use like a five and a quarter with some or four inch. I couldn't, I can't remember almost like a coaxial configuration. And it had like a six and a half for, for the base on the back or five and a quarter amplified powered speaker. Absolutely stunning. It, it probably my favorite sound or right at my favorite sound of the show mm -hmm. fit the room. Great. I, I couldn't believe they didn't have a sub again. I had to do the check, you know, <laughs> to make sure they weren't sticking a sub somewhere. Those those were exceptional. The Elax were really good. Um, yeah, I wish I heard the Elax. I missed those. Oh, yeah, the Elax were great. And tiny, tiny little towers. You know, a lot of the sound rooms were great. Um, monitor audio burned the midnight oil to set up their new high output theater system. And yeah, they had some issues at first. They had, and the guy, I felt so bad for them. They had to drive the speakers from Buffalo. From Buffalo. Yeah. Then all night, and they were done at like the show up and I think at 10, they were done at like nine 57 or, or yeah. whatever it was. They were, they were right on. They worked on. It wasn't that great at first, but I came back later in, in, in um, George, I believe great guy. I think he's a national sales rep played another demo. It was amazing. They had the big Sony three, three eighty projector on a, on a two, four, one screen. They played, you know, a lot of demos on it. That was a pretty good sound too. I enjoyed that. Always yeah. loved the Focal. Um, I think the two, the new Focal, speakers the vestias 
um, were just amazing. Like, I can't believe for the money how good they sound. It's, hard, it's really hard to say your favorite, but I'd, I'd have to pick the Cabas or the Alax as my two favorites. Yeah. Well, I want to answer this question on the row one because I have the same question with my wife because I'm I was really impressed by the seating company. I personally prefer the leather. My wife prefers the the cloth version. It's really a preference of what you like in your house. I think to me the the I know it's not real leather. It's like the kind of like the leatherette or I forgot mm -hmm. what material. Better than leather. It's vegan. probably more durable. Yeah, it's probably vegan more leather, as uh, Audio Advice well, calls it. Well, yeah, the the Audio Advice chairs were my favorite. Yeah, they have their new Revelation before. seats. Oh, those chairs were just so. As an integrator professionally, I've literally sold hundreds and hundreds of theater chairs at all prices. Sure. Um, it, it, you know, Joey. yeah, Joey on the Kansas, she loves them. So, really, the Audio Advice team has. Shane's they, wife. they spent a year and a half putting these seats together okay. and they did um, focus groups and all the things I didn't like about some theater seats they fixed um, and, and at a really good price with a really phenomenal, uh, it's not really, it's vegan leather. It's more stain resistant, more durable. Cause I'm telling you, I've seen theater chairs when you sell them, you got to warranty them. And some of them, when you put them in, make you a little nervous. Um, they've got a really reinforced infrastructure, great motors, uh, they hit a home run with that chair for the price. I, I can't remember, but I know it's well south of $2,000. Um, you know, the controls are on the cup holder. Every time you get a theater chair, you got to reach down and try to control it. Or if you plug a USB charger in, you'll snap it. But with these chairs, all the controls are like right here. And they've got memory settings on them. Uh, you can control the LED lighting on them. It, that, I mean, it's not a speaker or an amplifier, but I'm telling yeah. you, that was a sexy product. They, they're going to do well with that. So we got you did a video with Scott for for Audio Hawks. Appreciate mm -hmm. it, Don, and and oh, you no fans got a bunch of videos coming. Shane, we you and I shot I think nine videos or something like that. So we've got more coverage. Bunch. I just put the, put the Sony video up yesterday. If you guys want to get more into the details on that, we're just kind of giving you over. Right. Can we talk? I know you want to end in an hour, but can we just? Well, talk I about got a couple time? more. I got. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah, right. I don't want to miss that. I love these chairs. I'm just telling you guys, you're gonna probably see some of my chairs change in my house next year. <laughs> Um, I was just really that impressed by them. There, there you go. I was like ready to fall asleep at that point. And I like the fact that the headrest is adjustable. It's like that is such a good feature for someone that doesn't want to block the surround speakers or people behind them or whatever. That's my so daughter, you, Gabby, posing for that, that was one thing that's interesting is, as we say, we don't want the headrest, but then we raise up the headrest, mm -hmm. right? We do to a point, right, Michael? You know, as you don't want your neck being dangling the whole time. So here's the thing I told row one. You got this LED light. It looks like kind of like a lightsaber, right? Mm -hmm. On the it, pulls, it pulls off. But once it pulls off, it doesn't light up. It needs to be plugged into that base. Why mm -hmm. not make that a battery powered that's rechargeable? Yeah, then, oh, I'd say the rechargeable. I don't know. So Shane, oh. I know you complain because you kind of, you know, being a little guy, you kind of get down in the seat. I think you'd like <laughs> I am literally a couple. I'm a couple inches shorter than these. I'm like an inch shorter than these guys. Okay. <laughs> I didn't look like that in the photo, dude. <laughs> Told you, payback so. Poor Shane. Poor Shane. He's not. He's why pretty. Are you repeating. I don't know why he's repeating. <laughs> oh, so here's the Sony room. I want to talk about this. Um, mm -hmm. I honestly thought it was one of the best demos. I sat in yeah. the front row, so I know Shane sat somewhere in the back or. I was Shane in the or Michael sat all the way in the back. I was in the back. I slipped in and they already had three people up front. And I didn't have the same experience. Um, they were doing Hans Zimmer. Yeah. So really? Literally could not understand the majority of what he was saying from the well, back. German. Yeah. Well, but I mean, I, I own the disc. You're really? I mean, I really? Can, yeah, I can understand him. So it well, wasn't that. And I had clear line of sight. So it wasn't like sound was being blocked. So, but they had to, the center channel back about that far in on, on the platform it was sitting on. So I think later on he might have moved that to the front. I don't know, man. I, I love yeah, the sound. Yeah, I, mean, I would imagine hopefully sitting up closer you'd be able to understand it. But it just and, yeah well too they didn't have it very loud when I was in there. So oh. it was it was real soft. It wasn't like you know crank and it was just a real mellow wasn't even really a demo, I guess. But they really? were demo. So that was interesting. 
So my experience with that demo is I sat in the front, my wife especially, and she doesn't like demos super loud. So they played it at a moderate level yeah. and she didn't want to leave. Like there was that whole Hans Zimmer. I got to get that concert, by the way, the one at Prague or whatever. It's, it it's, it's on, um, you can it's stream phenomenal. it. Yeah, it's phenomenal, Gene. Yeah. Oh my God. So, I mean, I never heard the Sony 360 processing before. I know Matthew's got the 7,000 in for review. He just finished the bench test on it and he's going to be doing a review. I just felt like there were more speakers in the room than there were. I think it was an 11 channel speaker system with five subwoofers. Mm -hmm. And I just felt it was incredibly immersive. And the center channel, even though it was lower than the screen, I think they said um, Kavon was using the post processing of it to raise the li to lift the center channel mm -hmm. because it sounded like to me, it sounded like the voices were coming from the center or the vocals were coming from the center. I'm sorry that you didn't have the same experience. Mike. Yeah, it's, it's funny how every opinions vary on stuff because I thought it was a those I've heard those new Sony receivers a few times now set up with different kinds of surround systems. And, you know, I didn't really particularly like the last generation of Sony receivers. Yeah, but this new generation. I wish it had more features like PEQ and some more adjustability, but man, as far as a fire and forget, set it up. It's a really hard to beat product and the amplifiers are strong as death on those. Yeah. They, we bench tested mm -hmm. them. They do a hundred times seven all channels driven. So it's almost as, it's almost as powerful as a Marantz SR 8015. It's pretty close. Shane, what were the Kef series that were in that system? Was it R or something? R3? Those were the Q series, which oh, is a more affordable, the affordable line. Yeah, they're like twelve or fourteen hundred dollars each. I think they were eleven hundred dollars each for the towers, and they had towers everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, and they. Look, I'll I tell you, for the money, they look good too. Those are pretty cool towers. I yeah. thought they sounded great. I was really impressed by that. Oh, here's the um, the Revely. The, uh, yeah. yeah, these are the. I mean, seats that's a killer the theater room. chair, and it comes with a tray, which I thought, and they even went so far. I, I know it doesn't matter to a lot of you guys, but when you have a theater room and you have dedicated seats. That tray is really cool. And most people just toss them because they're long. It the it's it's the stuff too. slides off of them. They're loose. These yeah. things are like some kind of polymer with a lip on them. I mean, it's a really, really, really well thought out product. And a lot of times you have to pay about a hundred dollars per with every yeah, they come with them. Yeah. 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 I mean, they, like, they did their homework on it. I, I give them all the props for that. And it fits inside the storage area if you don't want to use it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you could you, you could dim those LEDs, and I think you can have it so only the cups light up with the lowest setting, and the bottoms so it doesn't mess. The, you know, you don't see the LEDs. You can turn the lights off. You can adjust it. And you know what's cool is a lot of the, the seats that have the little little trap doors or compartments on it, they they get real rattly and shaky. They're they're just they don't feel solid. These things felt like they they weren't even a box. It wasn't even a lid. It just felt like part of the chair. The utopias. These my babies. These, were these on or were they, was, were they static? They or they um, yeah, they had them. Um, okay, now, across the, the way, they didn't have the Bowers, um, the Nautilus. Of course, that was just for... That, that was, was show, yeah. I, I filmed them as they were unboxing it, getting it out of the box. Dude, those <laughs> those boys were sweating it. Because it's a $100,000 speaker, man. They're hanging on to it. No $75,000 a pair. Yeah. So this was the definitive technology room. They were using the Dimension speakers. I think they had seven there bed six. level, full range, and then they had uh, four or six. They had six, six, six heights. Six. Six. Yeah. six heights, and then they had the um, the fifteen inch sub, one in each corner for four of them. They were using yeah. directional base. They were using the Denon A1H, which uh, this is a beast. It's a fifteen a channel model. receiver. Does uh, 150 times 15 or 105 with nine channels driven? I mean, this thing has a you know, it's a weighs 70 pounds, it's got like a 20 pound transformer in it. This is like almost like the flagship from yesterday. It's the closest thing you're going to get to a super receiver. And I thought the system <laughs> sounded, I thought the system sounded good. It was a tad bright, maybe. Well, it was limited by the where the Atmos, I mean, they had them on poles angled down, not above your yeah. head. And, yeah. And those yeah. subs that they had, those new subwoofers that, with uh, they look like coffee tables and 115 and two passive 15s yeah that thing, for under two grand that thing's a monster yeah, 18 1800 video it, coming yeah, I mean, that's a great sub two three days from us yes it'll be interesting to compare that sub to the clip 16 to be honest with you put them head to head it's got to sound fucking i know that it'd be hard to beat that dev tech in that price range yeah they they actually have a top on them that you could almost use as a coffee table i mean it's crazy mm -hmm. 
It looks they're, really nice. Super they're clean. huge. So, so Def Tech is is a company that don't call it Def Tech. They don't like that. Oh, oh definitive yeah. technology. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. I'm old school. That yeah. some one of the best subs I ever had in my life was a Def Tech, the Definitive Technology Trinity. It was Def Tech back then, but um, they they've always made phenomenal subs. Just never got, you know, never been known for their subs, even though their their super cubes have always been great products. Yeah, we've got a written review. James Larson did of the Dimension DM80s. He did a very favorable review on them. So I'll be posting that next week on audioholics.com. We might even do a little video on them as well, a little live stream on them. But, um, and they ran Dirac, which I was surprised to hear that because I had problems with Dirac on uh, my Marantz AV10. It didn't properly set the distances for my LCRs and subs, so I'm still investigating that. But this is the lineup for them, definitive, definitive tech, technology. I thought the room sounded good. It did. We listened to the Co uh, King Kong movie, and who else did we listen to? It was like two demos we heard. Just where they had the Atmos speakers were up on a pole angle down. Like if mm -hmm. you were – I was a little bit to the right and could hear – you know what I mean? A little they bit more. A quiet place when I was in there. What's that? I said they did a quiet place in there when I was in there. Did they? Okay. Oh, That's okay. the monitor, the new monitor. I'll tell you what. Out of all the theaters that we went to, I not maybe I just wasn't paying attention, but I didn't hear anything coming from the top of any of them. I did. Oh, absolutely. I did. Yeah. The Focal, oh, Focal Room. Yeah. I heard quite a bit of yeah, content. Focal, definitely. Um, no, no. Even, like, I've seen all those demos. I've reviewed them all multiple times. I was just like, yeah, I think there was like one flyover and like Kong versus whatever. That was the only time it was like a helicopter flyover. I was like, oh shoot! I was like, oh, that's one cool. of them did the, um, I guess the uh, Ford versus Ferrari, where he comes in on mm. the plane. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's that it. That's the one. one. You're yeah. right. Where they, where they yeah. buzz. You know, that was yeah, really right. yeah. That's the only one that that I stuck out of my mind. Other than that, I don't recall anything that I, I was just like. Whoa. Yeah, I, I think, like I said, the most immersive sound I heard of the whole show was the Sony Kef room, and I know Michael yeah. didn't like it, so it's weird yeah. how we all had different. Uh, sure. We all had different. I like the fake out room a lot, but again, we were we were also sitting in different positions too. Mm -hmm. So I was yeah. in the very back; you were in the very front. And I think these yeah. guys listen. To be fair, so many people worked so hard to put this show yeah. on. Oh, yeah, and these guys. Yeah. I mean, they were up literally all night. Most of them. Yeah trying to tweak it and calibrate it and do the things that we take hours and hours to do. So Absolutely. I get my hats off to him for at yeah, least. Trade shows them. are not the most ideal acoustically to no. begin with, but very again, few companies even had any acoustic panels in any of their no. rooms. No, I mean, the, as you can see there, there's some curtains behind. But that's about it. Yeah. Curtains. We got behind. another super chat here. And of course they don't like the way I say per, I say per listen, it's supposed to be per listen. No, I mean, the way you say it there is fine. I think it's when you yeah, say per listen. That's I, I might do that. Yeah, I yeah, might. You do. You yeah. do. So true. Yeah, you do. I never thought about it, but you do. If I see Top Gun Maverick one more time, I'm going to, my head's going to <laughs> You know, Don, I've only seen that movie once because I knew we were going to get. Blind. You don't need to. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, they're the demo clips. You're always seeing the demo clips. Oh, my God. Right. Thanks for the super. And not even the, best, not even the best clip. I think yeah. the best demo clip is the end when they're doing the actual combat mission. Not yeah. the, the scene with the Aurora or whatever that plane's called. I, I just, it's just. Most of the time I never see that one. Um, they'll usually do either the final scene or okay. um, the one where he kind of breaks Rogue and does okay. his own thing and, to break. Yeah, the final yeah. one, the best, yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the monitor audio synergy system. I think, uh, Shane, they used Trino processing on this one. Yeah, Trino 16 on that one. Monitor. And then it was what yeah. projector? The Sony? Like Sony 380. GT 380, yeah. But it, so, was, listen, it wasn't that projector, because I put a few of them in, yeah. it only reaches its full output with 240 power. It'll yeah. do 10,000 angiolumens. Oh, so it was yeah. about less than half yeah. of that. Um, and then they had monitor audio amplifiers running the four passive subs and i think a trend of multi-channel amp running the the 16 the i think yeah. and i believe so mm -hmm. so we got to hear the demo i think it was the night that we got there was after right yeah before, after yeah, they set right it up before, right yeah. before the show uh was public it wasn't optimized obviously because they had problems getting the speakers there yeah it was um, screwed up big time the, the the subs were getting overloaded on some of yeah. the movie clips and then we listened to, of course, latest uh, trade it, the showman. What is it? The greatest right. showman, uh, never enough. Again, we probably heard that demo about a dozen <laughs> times. 
That sounded good to me. That was very immersive. Um, I was impressed with the sound staging of the speakers, the synergy uh, speakers. I just think that room yeah. needed more subwooferage, for mm -hmm. lack of a better term. And they there's no, have... I would guess there's no protection on their amplifiers, their external amp. No, they had well, it wired wrong. The, the guys just the, I talked to George, and I went back specifically to hear it. You know, to be fair to him, because mm -hmm. it it was horrible. At first, I thought it was no, popping. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and he knew it was. I mean, the sub was going pop. You heard it too, yeah. G. Yep. And I went back yep. after he revisited it and calibrated it. Yeah, because you were nine one day, day better day with Great me. System. Yeah. Well, I yeah. know somebody else that said they heard the same thing like Everybody. a day after we heard it. Yeah. He knew it was. Popping. I mean, he just. I mean, well, yeah, yeah. Two hours he sleep. Sleep. He heard it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it was a huge play. It was a huge space to fill. Last year, RBH was in there, and they had you know more powerful subs in there, and it's still yeah, they, they still could have used more subs because that room is yeah. ginormic. Yeah, I heard the RBH system was slamming last year. Yeah, it was it was too loud for Michael. Was it? No, it wasn't. No, it was not. It needed more. <laughs> button, to be honest with you, it needed more they, had, they had a lot of subwoofers in there, and they still needed some more bottom end. I did not feel it at all. I heard it. I don't think you. I don't think you can feel bass in a room like that. It's probably all concrete. You know, it's like that's I, difficult. I bet you could. There's some Ascendos in there, yeah. maybe or the twenty one. Oh, sorry, or some, or some RT RTJs up right there. JTR Jeff brought six of his Captivator four thousand ULFs to M Wave, mm -hmm. and it was a massive. It was fourteen hundred square feet. That that was like all car stereo boom guys that grow up and go to M Wave. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> that's that's 140 That's, dBs. Yeah, you, you come in and experience it, dude. You dude, I was just at Jeff's house. I don't care. He was. I got, I got four RTJs. Jeff didn't have, Jeff didn't have that set. I can't get it. I got four of the 18s in my room next room, dude. I know they, they were awesome. Yeah, Gene, we need to get these uh, bookshelves, though. I need to get these. Yeah, need, so you know what's interesting? Is of them. I like the monitor audio is using an MTM. Yeah. That's how yeah. they're getting that high output on it. You know, that's. Yeah, they. The, so they say it's 106 dBs continuous, but 123 dBs peak. And I, I don't know how they come up with that because that's I've never um, seen a peak that much higher. It's probably an eighth space instead of uh, free air. Because I, I asked them about that with the hyphens and they're like 129 dB. I go, that is that free space or is that corner loaded? And the guy that was in product development couldn't really give me a straight answer. So I'm mm -hmm. assuming they did a Klipsch maneuver where they did it in eighth space. Cause every time you have, you have a max SPL from Klipsch, it's usually an eighth space loaded, which is like putting a speaker in a corner. You have a I mean, they play space. super loud. I, I'm don't doubt, you know, it's THX. Yeah, they, claim, they, they claim these speakers will hit 102 DB at the listening area continuous. Yeah. So that's, that's, you know, pretty close loud. to reference level. Yeah. With the right power they did. Yeah. You need a lot of power. Yeah, like 800 watts or something. Yeah, they make their own amps and they use Pascal module, so mm -hmm. you know they've got the power. I've measured the, the Pascal amps. This has the uh, the GTR PSA type of finish as well, the truck bed liner. Just well, they're not meant. They're meant disorder. to be behind a screen. Well, yeah, they're all meant to be yeah. behind a cabinet. You know, yeah, like a not an influencer's room where he's changing. Yeah, stuff there you go. All the time. So the did, any of, thing. did any of you go outside and hear the outdoor system from Coastal Source? Yeah. That was Passion. cool. Man. I, I well, honestly, it good? I, they look cool. I've been out there thinking. Oh, go back one, Gene. Okay. Those that blue and those kefs, gorgeous. Oh, oh my heart. Oh, let, let's hear about the coastals because right, I I want to hear about the coastals. What so about the, the coastals? coastals like, I went out there because um, Adam Durham. He used to work with uh, Worldwide Stereo, and he reached out to me on LinkedIn and said, "Hey, Michael, we're going to be outside. Stop by our booth, man." And so it was the last day. I'm like, man, I need to get out there and. And hear these things and honestly i went out there just thinking okay these are going to be the normal outdoor speakers which are okay you know most outdoor speakers aren't amazing holy you'd be cow. shocked how many how holy amazing cow. outdoor speakers and you they were now they're pricey so the biggest towers sell for ten thousand a pair and the matching sub wow. about eight thousand twenty thousand a yeah. pair actually they're 20 you grand sure? a pair i'm positive Dude, yeah right. Yeah, the big yeah. coastals are 20. 10, yeah, so the maybe, line source. Maybe one. it was 10 each then, and then the subwoofer was 8,000. So, oh, yeah, I think you are. You're correct. But I know about it's in that backyard, and it's about 40 grand to have it installed. Wow. So, but it's killer. Out. You could cover a huge area. They're they're built like a tank. Yeah. I mean, Coastal's a great company. They, stand, they do all the research and stuff down in the Florida Keys. 
Yeah, I never had one. But really? I'll be honest, if you got the money, dude, oh, holy cow. They're epic. Those, those and the James loudspeaker mm-hmm. makes outdoor towers that are great. There's a lot of companies nice. that are really starting to produce some high, true, high fidelity, durable outdoor speakers. Appreciate the super chat, movie man. Yeah, buddy. Oh, wow. Appreciate it. So just showing love, guys. Keep up the good work. Thanks, brother. Government must keep that money. These are beautiful. Um, so I want to show you guys something that's not in this in these photos. I think we pretty much covered. Oh, here's the hyphens. Let's do this first. Oh, hyphens, yeah. Okay, so these are the ninety five thousand dollar pair of speakers from Monitor Audio. They're flagship. I heard a lot of people saying it looked like a paperclip. That's no, that's the Tower of Sauron. What? Lord, of the, Lord of the Rings, man, the Tower of Sauron. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it does. It does. It does. <laughs> it does. So it does. my impression of the speaker is it was in the wrong room. It should have been in a much smaller, more enclosed room with some acoustic treatments to really appreciate. But when they played them, I sat in the middle and they were, I think they were playing Smelly Cat at first, Don. I was like, can we put on something that has some bass and some dynamic? Smelly Cat audio. Smelly Cat audio. I got to sneak back in there after hours on Thursday night with a bunch of the reps, monitor reps in different areas and drinking a little bit of bourbon and they were they were jamming them out, man. They were playing them like, you know. They, they were out. they were they compressing like the first time I heard them? Um, <clears throat> maybe. Oh man, it's really... no, they do, but you're playing them at obnoxious levels. You know what I mean? Well, when yeah. they played the they played Billie Eilish "Bad Guy," which I know is like an overplayed song, but I know that song really well, and Great. I was impressed by the imaging that I was hearing. Um, mm-hmm. It sounded like the vocals were dead center and we had no sidewalls. I mean, this is a wide open room and the sound stage was huge. I mean, there was a lot of width to the sound of them. My only, my only knock was it wasn't enough bass, but they only have four eights in each speaker and it's a huge room. I think in a, in a, in the right size room that these speakers would just slam. Um, right. They're an arti- they're a, a statement piece. You know, they, the look on them is definitely unique. I've never seen a speaker that had two separate cabinets like that. And then they have those braces in between and then the woofers fire at each other. So they're, you know, uh, to cancel the vibration, uh, force canceling woofers. And then the, the mid range array, it's almost like a coaxial load because there's six, two and a half inch mid ranges and, and then one inch tweeter in the middle and then the AMT tweeter in the middle. So I, I think it's an inventive design. It, you know, it's, it's pricey of course, yeah. The Mark mm-hmm. Levinson amps are amazing. The monoblock amps, those are like, I think they are they only produce a certain amount of those amps. Well, you, you talk about them compressing. I mean, listen, you, the, you don't go out and put a roof on your house and hammer in nails with a Rolex. I mean, they played plenty loud enough and they were dynamic. It's just, you know, in a big room like that. I mean, they're not concert venue speakers. They're fine-tuned audio machines. I mean, and they're, they're easy, there's massive. nothing like them. What? Yeah, they shouldn't have been in that room, in my opinion. I I, did, I walked away going, "Oh, those are amazing speakers." I really did. I know, but imagine those speakers like where the Bowers and Wilkins room was. You know, yeah. imagine hearing that oh, speaker. Yeah, can more, imagine. Intimate, yeah. more intimate set uh, with some whiskey. If you know, like if Cambridge yeah. Audio set that system yeah. up, I think. Yeah. And Genius. those amplifiers, man. Uh, those They're beautiful. Anniversary Mark Levinson amplifiers, man. Fifty grand. Uh, if there's a cooler amp. Maybe the class A, you know what I mean? Would be the uh, they're, they're neck and neck. Good. They're neck and neck. Yeah. What about what did you think about that hi fi rose? I saw that streamer in a lot of rooms. That, Dude, that hi fi rose streamer is dope. Just the whole front panel. I mean, the sound was amazing, but the way it takes the cover art and does it in the front. But it's you know, it's what four grand, I think, four or five grand. Correct me if I'm wrong. But I don't I, I don't know. A lot of people were using the hi fi rose. It's it's a great piece. Yeah, it's nice stuff. Um, I think we're almost done with the pictures and I want to show you guys a secret weapon here that I, that I was impressed with at the show. Yeah. We saw all these already. Did you get any of the JBL room? Yeah. Yes, I'm looking yeah. for those. That was a big Thank one. you. We were in there. Yeah. Those JBL monitors, man. The powered monitors. Ooh, those were crazy cool. And you know, what I really liked was their little, their like a uh, lifestyle audio, like a radio and they make, a, they had a larger one out in front of the room. Remember? And then they had the new smaller one that just came out. And that yeah, sounds absolutely amazing for the size, the Burmeister. 
Oh, wait, there's Perlison. Damn. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of people heard the S70s for the first time and walked away impressed. And the funny thing about it is they were playing vinyl. I mean, a state-of-the-art speaker with super low distortion, you know, super wide dynamic range, and they were spinning records, and it did sound fantastic. Yeah, for listening. Yeah, they got mad when I tried to scratch, but, you know, other than that, we're cool. <laughs> oh, here's what I wanted to show you. So, all right, I got them here. Oh, the, G, the uh, headphones? So while I was waiting to get through all the red tape of interviewing Massimo people for Sound United, <laughs> oh, for... Uh, Morantz and awesome. Bowers and Wilkins, they wanted to do a headphone demo, an in-ear de- uh, demo. So it's the Denon Pearls and then the Pearl Pro. Now, this is an example of a company, Massimo, which is a medical company that purchased an audio company and they actually put their technology in it. I was not like, I was like, I don't want to waste my time doing this, but they're like, you got to do this. And you stick these in your ears and they do a hearing test. And the, the way Phil Jones explained it to me, it's like when they, when a baby is born and they do a hearing test on a baby, it's the same kind of process. They stick these earbuds in your ear and they have bone and they're partly bone conduction. So when you supposedly, when you do voice calls, they're, they're really clear because it's radiating through your skull, but it runs like a five minute process of testing your hearing. And, um, it plays tones. You don't have to, you know, raise your hand or whatever. It's all automated. It comes up with an EQ curve. And when they went and they started streaming music to me, I didn't think I was listening to earbuds at all. Like I had full range sound, incredible imaging. It was the best in-ear monitor I've ever stuck in my ear. I was like completely shocked. I'm like, whatever you guys do, I'm not leaving the show without a pair. And they brought, you know, that's similar to the military communication technology with throat mics and, and sound through the bone so that they can communicate without giving their position away and stuff. It's, it's like a trickle down from that technology and that's very expensive. Well, all I could tell you is Massimo is, is, uh, is definitely putting some technology into this company and I'm going to do a review on these. I don't normally review uh, earbuds, but I was so impressed by the sound of these and the noise canceling everything. I mean, it's just really impressive. I don't know. Did you guys get to hear him? I know Shane, you were like getting, you were worried if there were communal earplugs and you didn't want to stick. I was wondering about yeah. that. You know? Yeah. Really? I don't, they I didn't don't wipe know. them off. Just an FYI. I did not uh, see them wipe them off. Oh, them shut off. up. There had to be new, there had to be new tips. There's no way I could tip. I guarantee uh, that. Just Mike, uh, Mike, I did see him take them out of his ears and give them to Gene. Oh, shut up. Oh. Who? Who? <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Got hey, another super chat here from Ken. Thank you. Thanks, guys, for all the home theater community. Always love when you guys do these collaborations. Different opinions are always intriguing. Yep. I'll have different likes and different, um, even different hearing. I mean, we have different preferences. So, you know, yeah, cool. I mean, that's good. I think we all agree the show was awesome. The yeah. demo rooms were cool. We all had yeah. different experiences from it, but that's, you know, collectively, we yeah. all could agree it was a great time. Hundred percent, man. And yeah, the, the concert was great. The keynote yeah. uh, speech that Scott did was really great. Um, I can't. The weather was killer. It was like Gene, seventy-two Gene, degrees. Gene, right? Gene, you were on one of the panel discussions too, right? Yes. Yeah, that was great. I had a good time with yeah. that. I did the home theater one. You did one that was more like future tech. The, what well, was the future of home theater? Like, where are we going with this thing? So, what was your answer? I was sleeping at that time. No, so we didn't. The we were supposed to get to a kind of a controversial topic at the end, and we they started down it, and then they they stopped. I'm like, dang it, I was ready to go, man. So I'm gonna do a separate video on that. And really, just the thought is, you know, are are these massive TVs gonna overtake projectors? So oh, it, like when they yeah. get three <laughs> three years, three years, everybody hundred inches is gonna be the norm. So, watch, watch my video; it'll it'll be the real answer. There's the woofers of the hyphen speakers, by the <laughs> so, way, if anyone's yeah, interested. How dare you. One yeah, of my good friends is, is works for the largest manufacturer in the world of micro LEDs in China. One of my mm-hmm. best friends. And it's going to be more than three years. I'm just telling yeah. you. Yeah. Well, I'm t- we're so talking TVs. Right now, you can get 98 inches for like five grand. So, I mean, come well, on. The reality, well, you can get real ones for 10, but. Yeah, there's a lot of challenges with that, too. So, um just because it's bigger doesn't mean it's ideal. It doesn't you mean it's ideal, yourself, but <laughs> it doesn't mean it's ideal. It doesn't mean it's ideal, but a lot of people buy cheap ass Walmart TVs for you know, <laughs> seventy five inches for seven for two hundred bucks. 
Yeah. Imagine true. when we get those 9,800 inches for like yeah. two grand. Dude, we had too good of a time, man. Look at that. We're all drinking. We had a we had a good time. Y'all were drinking. I had like clear water. <laughs> Nick Rich. Yeah, it was it was a good time. Let's go back to that Here's, shirt there, Gene. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, I have I, I wore that shirt proudly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kung Fu. <laughs> like Derek Carradine over there. Oh shit. All right. Don't we're an hour and twenty, Gene. He didn't end well. So here's the JBL stuff. I was looking for this. Um, yeah. I'm a fan of vintage JBL. I grew up with JBL um, as a kid. I had speakers. This is just basically an updated version of the L100. So obviously with new drive tech, we did a review. They measure good. They sound great. They look retro. I'm not a huge fan of the grill. So I, if I own these speakers, I would never have the grills on them. This was Don. Come on. I had no idea that these, these speakers mm -hmm. had these, really these speakers were slamming. They had bass, they were articulate, eight inch woofers, and they're mm -hmm. in a giant room, and they were just kicking. Yeah, ass. the JBL killed it with, with those all all those sizes and models. Yeah, were phenomenal. I spent a long time filming that. Those particular white, I forgot what they call Arctic white, I think. Yeah, that's a beautiful finish. It's just solid white on the front, but then the cabinet on the sides and top. It's got a cool design. It's it's basically a white, kind of like a whitewashed um, veneer if you've got a photo of that. But I thought that combination looked superb. I really Definitely like the it. white is the one to get, I yeah, think. Yeah, it looked amazing. They had a lot of turntable stuff that connects to Bluetooth. I don't care for those girls. Younger crowds into yeah, I agree with you, Don. It looks like a waffle. Well, my dad had speakers with girls like that, and they just remember being all ate up and chewed up. You know what I mean? Yeah, not a fan of that. Don, what do you think about the synthesis in walls? Synthesis. Um, they were phenomenal. I, you know, especially like those 12 inch subs in that mm -hmm. giant room, they were killing That's a it. Massive room. Yeah, th those are great in wall speakers. I mean, yeah. if you're doing a dedicated theater, you want to go behind a an AT screen or mm -hmm. you, you got a tight space. I mean, they're just hard to beat. And JBL yeah. synthesis has always been a gold standard in home theater for many, many, many years. I mean, when I transitioned out of the M and K speakers, Don, you transitioned. <laughs> uh, I knew that was coming. <laughs> well, mm. just saying. Now, when I transitioned, because I used to do M and K speakers on all my theaters, and I started using a lot of the the JBL stuff. I mean, it, they're they're just hard to beat, man. I mean, they're legends. Yeah. So I have to I have to mention this because we reviewed the JBL uh, twelve hundred P sub. James Larson did, and he did CEA twenty ten measurements on it. It was overall a favorable review, but it wasn't an output monster below 30 hertz because of its form factor. Mm -hmm. But C CEA 2010 doesn't tell you everything, just like CTA 2034 doesn't tell you everything about a, a sub or a, a, a speaker. So you really got to be careful to just not interpret performance based on a graph. Mm -hmm. These subwoofers in every sit setting I've heard them in have punched way above their weight class. I thought the bass was really articulate on these subs. They they had good depth. They filled that large room, two of those subs. I mean, they just slammed. Don, I mean, you're a bass big room. Big room. Yeah. Yeah, and, and all the guys, um, you know, from Harmon were, were wonderful and took the time to, to talk to us about everything and lay it out. So It's a beautiful um, sub. I wish they would make a 15 version for it. Yeah, or an 18. Yeah, I love this sub. Yeah, that room was cranking, man. Yeah, it was it was a big, big room too. I mean, it, it actually, was one of the biggest yeah, rooms there. It opened up to the like mm -hmm. behind there was probably another quarter of that size room. A lot of open the, space. The Martin Logan stuff. Look, listen, I thought another one of my favorites I forgot to mention was F two hundred Martin Logan's. Yeah, oh, I got some pictures. Yeah. I'll put that up. Yeah, those well. they're beautiful and they, they sounded really good in that room. You they know? did. We got another super chat from Lamedus. I hope I'm saying Lamedeus. I don't know if I'm saying Lamedeus, it right. Lamedeus. Oh, oh, Lamedeus. <laughs> Any more insights on Bowers and Wilkins? Thanks, Audio Hawks. Um, I, you know, I like the demos that they gave. I thought the 800 series sounded really good. They had a nice uh, airiness to them. They had a little bite on the treble, but it wasn't something that was overly bright. The one thing about Bowers and Wilkins is every time I hear demos, the last two years at Audio Vice when they ran the 800 and the 700 series, speakers had good bass. You mm -hmm. know, a lot of a lot of uh, they've never been known for. 
really yeah so i mean, I think they've made a lot of improvements over the years on, on that front i was i was thoroughly um impressed with those speakers let me see if i could find the martin logan stuff did you guys uh michael did you get to hear the martin logans i did not i've got the whole series in for review yeah so i am super impressed with the f200s like really, yeah, two hundreds are crazy cool. Shane and his thing. better half, right there. Yeah, the oh, biggest part of those is the mid range on those is really, really nice. Very articulate. Yeah, I, I like the JBL. By the way, just going back, I really was impressed with these. Yeah, one hundred percent. That room was killer. I mean, you're splitting hairs at this level on a lot of this stuff. I mean, yeah. it's room centric too. The rooms they're in, where they're going, but a lot of them stood out. Kef blades. Leads. You know, I think my my wife put all these pictures from her phone onto Google Drive, and I think they're like repopulating because I'm getting like triples of the same pictures. There it is. That is Shane. A you love that shirt. You want me to send you one of those shirts, Shane? What's I gave that? it Wing Chun. What's that, supposed to, What's that supposed to mean? I mean, you guys kept commenting on my shirt. I'm assuming you were just jealous. That's, we call him Shane saying. Round. Can even baseball. Yeah. They do Wing Chun in one of the parks here. There's they're, the they're, uh, with, the, with the elderly folks, the coastal, yeah. outdoor speakers. Yeah, yeah, it's right a liner. Those, those are the king. Those are the king of outdoor speakers, right there. Yeah, they're liner, liner ray, and, and the bottom has a ten inch subwoofer. I think it's down firing. I mean, James makes some really impressive outdoor speakers too. They both are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, coastals are sexy though. Got a lot of fan pictures. I, I was skipping through them before, but we just, you know, people were so nice at the show. You know, the, yeah. the mm -hmm. attendees, they brought families, they got, you know, mm -hmm. kids involved. So it wasn't just all, all us old farts. There were a lot of That's young lot people there, things, which was cool. There was you know? A lot less hairy ears than usual. Yeah. Yeah. Surprisingly, a lot of young folks there. But hairy I ears. You know what I'm talking about. Photo <laughs> 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 <Odo> Baggins. <laughs> There's the monitor audio amps, by the way. Yeah, they, yeah. The Pascal amps. Yeah, they look yeah, very pretty. I like the orange on them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that rack is really nice. So our wives were into it, man. My, my girl was. Yeah. Neoliths. The amplifier was interesting. The Burmeister. Yeah, those Burmeister. Mm -hmm. it was, I didn't yeah, even know they made a uh, home audio amp. Yeah. Those, yeah, they were rocking. I, mean, I sent you that pic at like midnight. Yep. Yeah, they were cranking those needles. Oh, you 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 were down there. I thought you were just trying to get me to go down there. Yeah, I went down and listened to the speakers and hung out with Mike for about an hour or so. Show me how to make a website. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, that's that's cool looking. Yep. I don't even want to know how much that amplifier costs. That's Hawaiian gear. Hmm. I never yeah. heard of this company. Has have you guys, Don? Have you heard of Cord? Yep, I've heard of them. Yeah, it, um, they were, I think they were at Florida Audio Expo. Oh, yeah. okay. Cool looking stuff. There's the F200s. Mm -hmm. There's with Andrew. Andrew. Yeah, I love the white finish, man. I think that's my, by far my favorite. Didn't your wife prefer those? I saw a video you did with her. And she did. I was surprised. Clips, yeah. Everything gets a zero out of 10 wife acceptance factor, which is the she, white ones, Michael. She hates speakers. Really? So, really? Really? Yeah, seriously. Like she's like that's, that. Here's the interesting thing. It was her idea for me to have a dedicated theater room when we bought this house, and the thought was, is you can do whatever the heck you want in that room. Shut the door, and I'll never have to see speakers. So, because I've had speakers in the living room pretty much all my life and 26 years of marriage. So, wasn't that your house that had like 50 JTR speakers in it, and you had like red ones, and then you had a second room oh, with the the one falling off the wall? Was that, was that, one? that wasn't your house, Michael. No, no, that was a guy in like Clearwater area. Was that it? Was, that, was He's in Clearwater? that was interesting. I didn't know you could put all that audio in a double wide. <laughs> That's my stuff. It was triple wide. Huh? <laughs> that is messed up. That was a good set. This was a good demo. Um, they used the Anthem STR integrated, and I, I'm a big fan of these speakers. I know Pose has done the measurements and hopefully get the review done before well, I turn it. 100 is what he's got. I know. Uh, no, he's got, I thought he's got the 200. No, nah, he's got the F100s with the six and a half. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think we saw all these now. So 
<laughs> oh, Revel. Revel's got a Revel's got a new speaker. Oh wait, it's Revel. Oh, wait, it's it's a quad, and it looks just like a monitor audio. Wait, why did they have to use that name? I don't know. I just thought that was fine. I didn't was listen. Gonna sue did, somebody. Did you guys listen to him? I didn't get a chance to hear. Him. I didn't. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. Nice little pose there. See the tricep flexing again. I'm telling you, Gene. <laughs> Michael, you know, that's just my natural state. Uh, when, you know, when, when he's, just, in, he's always jacked, man. He's like <laughs> subconsciously <laughs> flexing. <laughs> I don't know, man. It just comes natural to me. I'm just trying to do my thing. Mm -hmm. Perilous. Mm -hmm. again. Perilous. And oh, Did we, are those the those those special ones? No, unfortunately, they, I was hoping yeah. they would hear them. No, those are just the regular ones. Yeah, there's the special edition have you know uh, higher output woofers and upgrades to the faceplate on the tweeter and and the and the crossovers and stuff. So I did not get to hear those, unfortunately. We got some nice uh, turntable shots. I will say that. Uh, yeah, I mean that the vinyl, the, the gold though. note, the gold note stuff was really awesome um, from Fidelity Imports. That's a great brand. Yeah, we heard those at Florida Audio Expo, right, Don? I don't know if we heard them. I, I checked them out at the show. That um, in-wall is like, if you want an arm workout, Michael, pick up one of the Perlis and in-walls. They're, they're the real deal. Well, Eric, when I flew up a long time ago, when they first um, kind of were announcing Perlis and nobody really knew who they were, they flew me up to their headquarters and he showed me their their big M wall that they were working on at that time. So yep. it's like a prototype, but it, it's, it's heavy for sure. And it's got so it's coming out with a real Atmos in ceiling speaker. They, I can't show pictures of it right now. It's Roswell tech until the patent it's, goes through. It's yeah, going they've been on that for a while. I'm looking forward to that one. Mm -hmm. hey, Gene, we in this man. There's the, there's the discussion panel I was in um, with Nick and, the guy from um, Paradigm, Trinov, Kinetics, mm -hmm. and Kevin Zora from Massimo. I've known him yes. forever. Yeah. That was a fun time, just doing yeah. those panels. It was. I think that is pretty much all the pictures at this point. I mean, um, Michael, you, did you hear anything that we didn't discuss that you want to talk about, or Don, or yeah. Shane? Yeah, the, the Coastals, like I said, I wasn't even planning on filming anything, but they impressed me so much. I said, Adam... Can I like do an interview with you right here? And as I'm miking him up, this guy comes up and I'm like, go make a sale, man. So I said, I'll, I'll just hang out here. So as he's talking, this guy was blown away. And I'm like, you mind saying that on camera? And so I just miked up the dude and I just let them go with the, the interview. And the, not really an interview. It was just more like he took him through this demo. So what you guys don't know is Coastal, if you can arrange a demo, they'll actually, they got like these cool Coastal um sprinter vans mm -hmm. you know and they'll they'll actually come out to your home and set them up in your yard and play a demo oh, and i, I that's no yeah the dude so, coastal you know what else they make too is landscape they lighting What's yeah that? they had those there where, mm -hmm. where are they based out of uh, they're in the florida keys the keys, the yeah. keys is where they do okay. the research and everything they're a cool okay. company man i'm gonna reach out to adam maybe I'll yeah, make they're, a they're an integration company so yeah. I, i'm super familiar with you know like you said yeah. the outdoor audio most people think outdoor audio or a pair of rocks or, yeah. you know, some like big on walls or whatever. There is a, a whole world of outdoor audio that is absolutely legit. High, you know, you, high fidelity. Dude, that's your space, high, Don. You are the yeah. pro at that. This, you should see some of the systems Don put in outdoor venues with the screens that come down, the reverse image. Yeah. I mean, dude, you yeah. th we should just do a live stream on outdoor stuff well, and have you do I, your installs. So young. You know, I'm starting my own channel <clears throat> and with all working with these guys and it's I'm going to focus on that kind of technology because, yeah, you, you know, know so many it. other things are covered, you know, by so many, you know, really great influencers. And another thing I wanted to know too is, you know, we're all pretty good friends. At least I like to think so. And we talk and we talk about audio you and keep telling Don that we're friends. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's all I got. But now we, we, uh, we cut up and, and um, that's cool, man. I think, Michael's been a big um, supporter of bringing everybody together. I, I just mm -hmm. don't see all the anger and the hostility and, and fighting about stereo, you know? Yeah. Oh my God, this is so much better. You know, it's all good, man. It's all good, man. 
It's all good. It's all good. Cool. All right. Well, I think that's a wrap. We were supposed to do this in an hour. It's an hour, an hour and 34 <laughs> minutes. You're cutting into my gym time. I got to go do some flexing so I could hold those per listen speakers, yeah. you know, with more authority. Yeah, they're pretty cool. Oh, mercy. Any uh, closing comments, Michael, Shane, Don? No, it was great hanging out. The folks at yeah. Audio Vice Live. So if you guys haven't been to Audio Vice Live, definitely, man, make your plans next year. They're already working on the dates for that. They'll probably be announcing that pretty soon. Thought the Heather today about it. First so. class, man. Yep. That, that, that's the two words that come to mind. Just yeah, they do it everything well. about it was great, and they treated it like 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 celebrities. You know what I mean? Or or yeah, and I think the one. The one thing I gave them as feedback is I would love to have just an entire dedicated day for us to shoot our videos. Get that Somebody out of the way up. when the public isn't there. Right. That way we could, because I want to enjoy the show more. I, I miss so Shane, especially. It's the first time I think you've ever been to like a, a trade show, right? <laughs> the first time. <laughs> well, we <laughs> first time I've been to audio advice. I'm not talking about Comic Con, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah I would like to just experience the rooms. I would like to go from room to room. I think, I think we saw maybe about 5% of the rooms. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of other stuff. I, everybody was like, yo, did you check out this room? I was like, I was like, I didn't even know they were there. Right. Well, so many you yeah. makeup on. I went and looked at a bunch of rooms one morning. Yeah. There's a lot of time just standing around waiting. Like, I don't know where the time went. We were just like waiting. We blew through that. Yeah. Yeah. It was like just a lot of waiting. I was like, what the hell are we doing? A lot of shaking hands with fans and stuff like that. I mean, that was cool, but yeah. 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 Shane had like one or two fans that shook his hand. So that <laughs> yeah, took a lot of time. The real Shane, as <laughs> opposed to the fake, like the real Slim Shady. I always have to be like, "Hey, you know this guy over here, right, Gene? Oh, what? You're you have a YouTube channel too? <laughs> like, yeah, he does. I never heard that, but okay. <laughs> no, Michael was Michael was the one that was walking around. With wow, did you just really see that? <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that's a wrap. Um, please check out Youth Man Reviews and check out the real Shane Lee's YouTube channels. They both have Patreon channels. They both do awesome work. Of course, Thank audio holics, you know, us, um, Don coming soon. Well, yeah, coming soon and, uh, coming back on our channel. We need you more involved in getting your custom integrator architectural sure. kind of perspective to things. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and please start making plans for next year to go to audio advice live we're going to be there again covering it and it's just something i hope that happens every year of course michael's doing his yeah. own m wave show one of these days maybe i could go check yeah, it out. yeah i gotta be there i was heartbroken i couldn't go there this that's year that's in kansas kansas city right michael yeah kansas city we're gonna probably move it up to june instead of july just to put a little space in between the two shows make it a little bit easier for everybody yeah so all right, guys. Well, that's a wrap. And until next time, my friends, keep listening.